Hello and welcome back to East Coast Bucks. This is show number two, the Whitey Nine Hunt. And before I get into the commentary about this hunt, this is the last week in August when I'm filming this. So I want to give you an update on what's going on with the upcoming 2020 season. Been getting some really good pictures of some good bucks over there in Maryland. So anybody out there that's not already following the Facebook and YouTube page, I encourage you to go on there to at least check out this big drop time buck that I'm getting ready to post after I shoot this video. Because I just got back, was over there this morning, pulled the card on a, a new set that I, that I moved a little bit. And this buck, I had some nighttime pictures of him last week. And I got some broad daylight pictures of him. And he's a heck of a buck. Great representation of a nice East Coast buck. And, uh, you know, we kind of get frowned upon about, by these Midwest guys sometimes. And rightfully so. They got some great bucks. Don't get me wrong. But we got some slammers over here on the East Coast as well. And uh, check that buck out because he's definitely a slammer. And he's obviously going to be on the hit list. And uh, we'll move on now to what this show's all about. Like I say, so I'm hunting this Whitey Nine buck, and um, <clears throat> it's about mid rut now where we're going to start the action off. And you'll see from this first buck's reaction, you can kind of tell what time of year it is. And he puts on a heck of a show, and so does the next buck after him. And then I'll get back to you after these couple clips, and we'll go from there. So um, it's a new set. They were both in here yesterday evening. Let's see what happens. I feel good about it. Uh, the first set's usually the best. So uh, hopefully we'll make it happen and uh, we'll get ready to get quiet.
Okay, welcome back. So as you saw, that nice younger, it's probably a three-year-old eight-pointer come by. That's the stand. This is the area that I'm hunting for that whitey nine buck the next day. <clears throat> That's why I'm giving you the um, preview of what's coming up because I want to kind of run you through what, what my mindset was that evening. So I hunted that stand that evening, had that 16-inch wide eight-pointer three-year-old come by, and uh, all the deer I saw that evening, and I had hunted this stand before, the week, weekend before, and uh, they all kept going over on that ridge. And I said, you know what? They're, they're feeding on those red oaks. There's a couple small red oaks over there that, to me, I've always found those smaller red oaks seem to hold on to some of those acorns a little longer than the other ones. And it seemed like they were dropping more about 50 yards from where I had that stand uh, where we just left that scene where that eight-pointer came by. So I left the stand up that evening, and I said, you know what? Let me go check that camera. There was a scrape over there on that ridge, too, but it's more open over there. So that's why I was where I was at that evening. So I said, let me go check that camera, because I had the camera right on the scrape and see what was going on. So I got to tell you, I go over there and check the camera, and there's two nice bucks in there at nighttime now, the evening before. And uh, one of them, it wasn't the whitey nine buck, it was another nine pointer that was a darker nine. And he was actually looked younger than the whitey nine buck. Well, he was in there breeding a doe. Now, they both were coming back and forth through that scrape several times uh, the night before that hunt. So I said, oh, man, so I know what's going on. If you got a doe that's getting bred literally on top of a scrape, you need to be on that scrape that next morning. So now I'm at home when I see these pictures. I didn't look at them out in the field because I didn't have my um, card checker. So I said, well, i got to go back in there in the morning. Didn't have another stand with me at the house. I had them all up. So I said, I need to move that stand first thing in the morning, which sounds crazy, I know, but I've done it a lot of times, and I've had success doing it. So I have no problem. If I've got to move that stand 20 yards, that's what I'll do to get in position to have a bow shot. You know, if it was a gun or a muzzleloader, no big deal. I could have shot him from the set I was in. But I knew I needed to be within shooting distance of that scrape especially after I saw a doe being bred there the evening before. So that's what I did. I go in there super early, grab that stand, I move it. By the time I get that stand set up, now I only moved it 20 or 30 yards. I'm right where I can reach that scrape. There's also a couple small red oaks there that are dropping. And uh, so I'm in a good position. It's more open where I'm at, but I saw that's where all these deer are going through. So I literally get that stand set, and we're, just, we're going to pick this scene up. This is five minutes after I've set this stand, and I barely had the camera arm on the tree, and you'll see what happens next. And I'll get back to you after this scene.
this is 15 yards from the first shot. This is a lot better shot than I thought it was. I can't believe he made it this far. I could hear the blood running out of him when he was standing here. There's the second arrow. Old Muzzy did the job, boy. Be easy to track, except that I've already seen him go down, so. That's what you call blood trail. Well, enough of the excitement. We've seen them go down on film, so. No sense acting like we didn't find them yet. We already did, and. He's a nice one, a real nice deer. Shot him right above that blowdown right there. He might have went. He might have went 60 yards after that second shot. I think more like 50 actually. He's full grown. Let me tell you. Definitely a mature deer. There was another big nine in here also, similar to him. I was debating on shooting. And this one, without a doubt, the body size and just, just the look of his face and everything, you could tell this was a, definitely an older deer. So the good news is I've seen that second one after this one, and I'm glad that I got this one first because that other one would have been hard to pass up. Boy, what a deer. I tell you, this must be the year of the tall, tight rack. Here's where that first shot hit. Center punched him. I can't believe he stayed on his feet as long as he did. Big old belly on him. They say that first shot should have done them in, but what a pretty deer. Couldn't be happier. Not very wide, but man, he is tall and thick. Well, here he is. Drug him up that half a mountain. Really just a big hill, but it felt like a mountain dragging them up there by yourself to come back to the truck get an SD card ran so much footage this morning after I shot this one that I used up all my SD card so ended up getting them gutted getting them tagged and dragging them up up the hill back up towards the barn <clears throat> I have to call my buddy to see if I can get some help getting them the rest of the way and getting them up in the truck but anyways, I wanted to review what happened this morning because it all happened so quick. Basically, I just set the camera up, put it on the camera arm, turned around, and this buck was coming in on a string. I literally had just enough time to get the camera on, and he was 15 yards away. I didn't have an arrow knocked. I shoot fingers, luckily, which I'm a strong advocate of fingers. No, you never see anybody shoot fingers anymore, but... I shot this book, bare fingers, no finger tab, nothing. Didn't have to worry about putting on a release. All I had to do was get the camera on, take my time. There was a tree in the way, splitting his body, and he was so close that I knew he could blow out of there at any second. So I just decided to go ahead and 
put it through the center of them and run it, you know, quarter and away up forward. And that first shot would have done the job. The uh, second shot, uh, I don't know if I got that on film, but you can definitely hear it going away. It absolutely crushed them. Uh, and always helps if you can get another arrow in them. I had to duck down and shoot up through some bunch of trees to get them, as you'll see on the video. But um, that last shot hit him behind the shoulder and come out his neck, and he was dead on his feet. He was really about to go down uh, before that second shot hit him. I'm going to have to review the footage and see all what happened. Uh, he stood there for a while. It seemed like a half an hour. But when you're excited, half an hour could only be 30 seconds. It's hard to tell. But uh, I'm happy with them. I seen this book earlier in the year, and I was confusing them with another 10-pointer. I thought he was a 10-pointer, but he's actually just a big, tall nine. He's an older deer. The other one in there is also a Okay, nine. welcome back. So as you saw, that hunt kind of went down. Uh, it, was, it was a cool hunt. I still remember that hunt a lot. Uh, it was, you know, I love morning hunts because you have the all the daylight and everything to you know do your filming and stuff after you recover the deer especially as a you know self film guy that i am uh you know a lot of times we don't have somebody over our shoulder to hold the light and film all this stuff so i was able to capture the recovery and everything which was pretty cool and it just was one of those real cold late november um actually i think it was the last day in november just an awesome hunt, and I really enjoyed it, and I want to thank everybody for watching. And um, like I said, there's a lot more hunts like that coming up. Next week, we've got an awesome one coming up, so you definitely want to check that out. And if you're not already following us on Facebook and YouTube, uh, you might want to go on there. At least check out that big drop-time buck I told you at the beginning of this show, because he's a heck of a deer. Uh, he's not the biggest deer in the world, but he's a cool deer for the East Coast and uh, kind of shows you why I had the idea of East Coast Bucks because that's what it's all about right there. Thank you and be safe.